Welcome to episode 594 of Salcedo Paranormal. I'm your host, James Salcedo, and tonight I'm sharing true paranormal stories on the web. As always, you can find all episodes of the show, along with links to social media and other ways to contact me at the podcast page. And that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S-A-L-S-I-D-O Paranormal dot podbean dot com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or accounts of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Thank you all for listening, whether you are here for the live streams on Discord or if you listen to the podcast or YouTube feeds or on the Trouble Minds Radio Network. KUAP Digital Broadcasting. There you can hear replays of two episodes of the show every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right before Trouble Minds Radio comes on. And as always, I want to thank Michael Strange, host of Trouble Minds Radio, for having me on the network and putting all my shows up there. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, there are some different ways to do that. You can always share the show with others. And rate and review it on your favorite podcast platform. You can find books I've written over on Amazon, uh, Paranormal Fiction and Nonfiction. You can also sign up for the Patreon page, where I put out one extra episode of the show per week. Uh, over there for anyone that uh, for anyone on the paid membership tier levels there. And um, that uh, doesn't matter which which one you sign up for. The, the benefits are the same, just the extra episode every week. and uh, Or you can also make one-time donations through PayPal. Support is never expected, but always appreciated as there are expenses in making these shows and the books that are going to be associated with them. And uh, that is, of course, uh, equipment and research materials and then uh, travel expenses in some cases. I think that covers all of that, so I can get to the uh, the stories here. So thank you all again, as always, for joining me for these shows, to listen to these shows. Um, the first one here, once I find my spot again, this one says, When I was little, I used to see the same woman walking around my house. The woman had bright copper hair and eyes brighter than the moon and bluer than the sky. She appeared to be an apparition and would never pay attention to me when she was walking. The woman wore a nurse uniform that looked like it was from the 1940s and she would wander without a goal. Her other outfit was a bright white dress that had light genuinely glowing, but I could not make out any details on the dress or the woman. When wearing the white dress, the woman would consciously watch me from 10 to 20 feet away. I never felt scared or even the initial fear of seeing her. I would tell my mother about the woman, but she could never figure out who it was. The closest description would be my great-grandmother, but she was blonde, not copper-haired. Nobody else fit the description, so my mother would call the woman my guardian angel. I have not seen the woman for years, possibly because I got older and the veil thickened. I believe I have been saved before, so I hope the woman is still there, even though I can no longer see her. And that's where that one ends. The idea of the same woman appearing in different clothing and sort of being sentient when appearing one way and then not, possibly not sentient, not there, in the other way. Um, I wonder if it's a mix of things. 
I wonder if it is two apparitions of the same woman. I wonder if it, when she's in the first outfit or uniform or whatever, the nurse's clothes, I wonder if that's more of a residual energy of some kind. But then the other apparition of her in the white dress, again, woman in white, um, with, with light, light all around, I wonder if that is more more her, more sentient, if that is actually her spirit, or at least a part of her her consciousness that is there. I wonder if it's, again, two different versions of the same person uh, that are going on there. And uh, I would, of course, I would love to, to have uh, more details about the history of that area and that house to find out what's going on there. Yeah, same woman, same woman different uh, different dress that as wild uh, Matt's all there, and uh, hope not a banshee. Gigi says, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it seems like the writer at least thinks that that she may be a, like a guardian angel. Which, if that's the case, that's amazing. Nothing wrong with that. Um, so yeah, I just wonder if if there was if had been, if it had been described different in a different way. If um, there had been more interaction when the woman was in the nurse's uniform, then it might it'd be harder to tell for sure. But to me, that seems like it could be the case where the one apparition is residual and the other is the is the actual a, a sentient spirit. So I don't know, um, but that's a neat one there, just because of the. You don't hear that all the time. There are some spirits that do seem to be able to change or entities that be able, that can change appearance, change clothing, those kind of things. Um, but it doesn't seem to be the case all the time either. So, so yeah, that's a neat one there. Um, and I'm glad that the writer there never felt any negative uh, energy coming from either of the sightings, uh, either of the types of sightings they had there. And again, I just love to know the history of the place. If, if that woman ever lived there, um, or in the area, again, it doesn't always have to be tied to an exact the same building. It can just be the land, whatever was on the land at a different point in time. Um, so yeah, but that's a neat one. Those are that's one of the those uh, where you can kind of point out to people and say this is if, if it's all. If all the paranormal is all evil or negative, then what is this? Um, so, one of those kinds of situations there. Uh, moving on to the next one. This one says, uh, okay, um, this happened less than an hour ago. I am currently staying in a hotel. And I often take walks during the day or, or night. About four minutes before typing this out, I was walking upstairs and back to my room. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a dark figure dart from one wall to another and disappear as quickly as I saw it. Adding to the creep factor, I felt very weird as I approached the area, as if someone was near me, despite the fact that usually everyone else was in their rooms by that time. The dark figure appeared to be the size of a child. And that's where that one ends. Um, hotels, it's one of those hot spots. And uh, it's hard to know for sure what's going on there. I, I, I wonder, too, in some cases where... People um, think they're seeing children. I wonder how often it could be something else as well, some other um, type of entity, something maybe along the lines of uh, little folk, little pe little people of all, all different kinds all around the world that are seen. I wonder if there could be some that are. I've heard of accounts of that people seeing them in buildings in in. As well as out in nature, but also in buildings, in houses, um, even 
one I barely remember now from a year or two ago in the show where someone saw one, uh, this child child's figure in the um, under, like in the ground level of a parking garage and uh, couldn't figure out where it went. So, um, but I mean, it could be a child as well. It could just also be shadow figure sort of being more compact at the time because I've heard of accounts of shadow figures being able to change shape and size. There's really no no end to what it could be there. Um, but again, hotels are just one of those busy types of areas for people that are there in the physical realm and also possibly others as well. So, um, so yeah. Not much more to go off of that on that one. But I uh, guess I'll move on to the next one here. Some of these, I uh, found like four or five in a row, I'm noticing this now, that are fairly short. So we may get through more of these than usual today on this episode. Uh, this one says, I am 90% sure this was not a dream. As I felt the sensation of waking up before the experience. I was lying in bed, half asleep, when I opened my eyes. I saw an angel praying at the end of the bed, with a stereotypical cute cartoon angel form, surrounded by bright light. The angel then moved, or teleported, to stand at the, fo- at, at the end of the bed, facing away with the light significantly dimmer. The angel then disappeared, leaving the room in total darkness. The same type of experience happened to my mother when she was younger. My mother saw a woman standing at the end of her bed, holding a baby, surrounded by bright light. Later, my brother, um, brother, mother recognized the woman as a deceased family member and the baby as that family member's child who passed away as an infant. And that's where that one ends. So it sounds like there's a history of possibly sensitivity in that family, which you do hear about and uh, I think is a thing. Um, based on what I've heard and experienced myself. Um, I'm not the only person in my family. I won't go into detail about who else has had experiences, but if you listen enough to my previous shows, you probably heard some of the other things I've talked about with family being involved and having experiences and those kinds of things. So, um, so yeah, it sounds like whatever that first figure was, it's hard to say because... I do think that sometimes whenever entities appear, they take a form that is going to be the least distressing to the person. Not to say that there can't be sort of uh, these entities that do appear as they do in popular culture, but also I think that some of that is these entities being uh, being able to take a shape that will be, again, less uh, less frightening to the person involved in the sighting. So, um, looking at the chat here, uh, DG says, love examples of loved ones meeting on the other side, yes. And uh, Mattel says, hereditary, yeah. I think it definitely is. Um, again, just based on experiences I've heard of and have had uh it can be i don't think that i don't know that if that's the case in every situation i think people can just go to places and have a random encounter with with the paranormal but um but also i think that there is a that is a, a factor as well the hereditary factor is, is there as well so uh so yeah just all kinds of variables as i always say and uh, how people have experiences and who has them and who doesn't when they do and all those things. 
Moving on to the next one here. This one says, One night I went for a walk in the suburbs of northern Kentucky. In the middle of the night, I heard an unearthly, human-like howling or bellowing sound on a golf course. The sound was a type of screaming like a banshee mixed with the loudness of a T-Rex from a movie. On the walk back home, I saw a large dark figure in a tree. Suddenly, a giant gust of wind hit only that tree, bending the large oak tree nearly in half. The gust was like a giant bat or bird taking off, going in a downward direction. The loud noise, presence, and unexplainable downward wind gust all happened on the same night at the same time. Apparently, other people in northern Kentucky have made similar eerie reports involving loud, unearthly howling or screaming sounds, giant winged figures and gusts of wind, unexplainable downward gusts of wind affecting a particular spot. Uh, and that's where that one ends there, the sentence ends there. Uh, the experience uh, hunt is still on my mind. I'm open to hearing explanations about what I may have encountered. And I messed up the reading of that one somewhat, so sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, that's quite the encounter there. And um, I don't know what's going on there. It sounds like some kind of cryptid, possibly. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Um, but uh, it sounds like the, the person there that had that experience did some research and found other reports of similar things. And uh, I don't doubt it. There's all kinds of uh, all kinds of entities and creatures that seem to be out there, and uh, some people do encounter them. I had a it's not a major thing, I don't think, but I had a funny thing happen tonight before I started recording this sh these shows. Um, I so I live in an apartment complex with another apartment complex right behind my place now, and a road and a parking lot and everything. And uh, I've uh, there used to be some more trees back behind my place, but now those have been removed and trimmed and all those things, I guess, because of the other new apartment building. But um, I heard an owl hooting behind my place, and which is fine. That's a normal, natural thing. But I've never heard that sound here before. I've been here for over 16 years. I've been up at night for many nights, most nights probably, you could say, of that 16 years. And I've never heard an owl sound. So did a random owl just fly through or stop and I don't know. It was kind of weird. It was just that it was so random. Um, and of course, there's all kinds of uh, books and things and discussions about how um, how that how they are just they're around and they're not maybe always maybe aren't always owls as they seem or they signify other things, spiritual things, or also encounters with the uh, Again, with aliens or UFOs, all those kinds of things. And I just thought it was really odd that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that this happened. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know what it was for sure, but it was really, um, it surprised me. And Logan, my cat, heard it too. She was looking at the window. Um, and uh, so I, 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 it probably was just an owl, but again, 
to have that happen here for the first time ever that since I've been here that I know of was uh, quite the surprise. So uh, at, at, and I'm thinking at least it was just an odd occurrence with a regular owl and at most who knows what else. I guess if anything else happens, I'll have to keep you all updated as I usually try to do. But uh, yeah, so it just made me think of that because that was unexpected. So uh, let's see about getting one more account of an experience in here before I stop for the night. Or, well, for this episode, I should say. Um, so this next one says, uh, this happened when I was around uh, nine years old. And my little sister was three. It was around 10 p.m. at night. I was playing computer games on my desktop in my room with my desk facing the opposite wall from the door. I heard something hit the wall beside me twice, but saw nothing when I turned around. I then saw my little sister, who was very small at the time, and often wore an uh, oversized t-shirt to bed, walking down the stairs next door to my room. I called out to her, but she didn't respond, and just kept walking down the stairs. When I went to the stairs, my sister wasn't there. I checked downstairs, but my sister wasn't there either, with only my dad home taking a shower. I found my sister asleep in our parents' bed. My mom was at work at the time. As a kid, I shrugged it off, but as an adult at 26, I am disturbed thinking about what I could have seen walking down the stairs that night if it wasn't my sister. And that's where that one ends. And I don't know what they saw. Maybe some kind of uh, astral projection, out of body experience that the the, the the little girl was having at the time. Um, I'd be curious if it was the same shirt that if um, if the if the experiencer there could tell which shirt it was that that she was wearing when she was in bed, and if it was the same one as whatever this figure was that walked down the stairs. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what that one. I don't know. I would think it'd be kind of difficult for a kid to walk down stairs with an oversized T-shirt on when they're that little. But also, I've never had kids, so I don't know. Um, but, yeah, that's quite the encounter there. And... Uh, Glad that they were able to verify and make sure that the sister was okay. But, um, yeah, I don't know what to make of that one either. Possible out-of-body experience. Um, I would hope that would be what it is, because otherwise it's definitely creepy. So, um, but, yeah, I think that's all I will do for this episode here. Thank you all, as always, for listening. Please check out all the links in the episode descriptions, especially whenever I have guests on. Um, on previous shows and, and also future shows. Um, please check out the links and please check out the uh, Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting. Uh, there's great stuff playing on that station all day, 24-7. Uh, thank you all, and I will talk to you all in the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.